Welcome back to BFL as we discuss cancer in the studio, Dr. Owen Gabriel and Rufus Bousquet. Now, we've gone through some of the pictures and we, as I said, we're going to be talking about some alternative treatments, but of course we want to talk to Rufus Bousquet more about the type of cancer he has and just to help us to understand uh, how he felt and what he's doing about it right now. So, first question, Rufus, is what type uh, of cancer do you have? Well, uh, I almost feel intimidated answering that with a doctor here. He's a technical <laughs> guy. You know, he, he took care of me, so he knows this stuff better than I do. And mm -hmm. um, obviously, he he was able to 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 uh, give the your viewers a very clear mm -hmm. sense of all the technical and medical aspects of of this disease. Mm -hmm. uh, me, I you know, I'm just the real guy. I could just tell you what happened to me, and um, I, it's colorectal cancer. I think I'm correct in saying. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially, it's cancer of the colon, and um, I, I, had, I have a month, uh, an, an annual checkup. I did for many, many years. And um, I went to see my doctor about, uh, I would say in January of last year. And when I saw her, to be absolutely fair to her, I indicated to her that I felt that I was not going to the bathroom as comfortably as I normally did in the past. And she indicated to me that um, we did a stool test, and uh, that came out okay. So I guess you, they were attempting to see, and correct me if I'm wrong, Doc, if there was any blood in the stool, right. you know, and having not found any, that seemed okay. But she did say to me that you need to go have a colonoscopy. Now, I was busy at the time as foreign minister. I was traveling all over the place, and um, I never did. Uh, and it continued. Uh, I continued. It, the whole pro process started deteriorating more and more in, f in terms of having difficulty um, using the toilet, to be quite frank about it and open. Um, and it got to the point where I was uh, in London for about a week. And I was going to dinners, I was going to meetings, I was going to breakfast with people, you name it, and I wasn't going to the toilet. So I said, something is wrong here. So I called another doctor uh, in St. Lucia, who was a personal friend of mine, and I said to him, look, this is, this is strange. I, I, you know, something must be wrong here. I just thought it was the stress and pressure of traveling and so on. I, cancer was the furthest thing from my mind. In fact, I always focused on prostate cancer because you, know, you heard of so many people mm -hmm. who had passed away from prostate cancer. You figure, look, that, this one's not going to get me. Mm -hmm. So there was always this focus, you know, throughout on prostate cancer. So I felt as long as my prostate is okay, well, you know, I'm good to go. Uh, nonetheless, uh, when I called him, he said, look, you get back down here right away and go have a colonoscopy immediately. And I came down and within a day of arriving, uh, you know, I spoke to some doctors, had the colonoscopy and the uh, doctor came in, you know, and said, I don't have very good news. That's basically how you put it. Those were his exact words. And... Um, what he did though, I still didn't have any real idea what he was going to tell me, you know. And he says there's a very large tumor. In fact, the tumor was so large that it actually blocked the colon, you know. And they couldn't even get the, the tube all the way up for fear of, you know, rupturing the colon. Uh, but there it was and he said, well, we're going to do a biopsy, but, you know, from what I'm seeing, it doesn't look very good. And so that was the first dose of reality that hit me. And of course, uh, all sorts of things flood your mind at that point in time. You, you know, I, I didn't know very much about colon cancer. I hadn't read up on it. Uh, by way of advising and communicating and transferring some useful information to people, I, I, I always take the position that my health is my responsibility, not the doctor's responsibility. Too many people sit around and they wait for the doctor to call them the doctor to tell them to do this, the doctor this. I took a very proactive approach to the whole thing. And so I started reading up on it, finding out as much as I could. You know, I always tell people, when you sit with a doctor, don't act like you're, you're a child at school. You know, drill the person, ask them questions and all this sort of thing. Find out what it's all about. So you have a thorough understanding of what it is that is confronting you. And so you can make informed decisions about your own treatment in certain cases, because you're the one who's going to feel it, you know. And, um, so, you know, it went from there uh, to, to where, uh, you know, obviously the biopsy came back. Uh, it said it was uh, cancer. It said it was um, uh, moderately active. Is that the word that they use? 
Well, we see moderately differentiated. Yes, but, but it just in, in other words, in, of in terms of its, its aggression, it was, right. it was not one of these least aggressive, but it wasn't the most aggressive. Mm -hmm. It was sort of somewhere in the middle. Uh, and then uh, from there, having, having done that, I figured, okay, let me, um, let me start you know, ramping up the, the, the various diagnoses and trying to get the best treatment that I could possibly get. So I, I decided to travel uh, to, to Miami. Uh, I inquired about who uh, the best people were, to be quite honest with you. And um, I got, you know, the, the head of, of, of uh, medical school, the professor with respect to that sort of thing, specialized in colon cancer and so on, and I went to see him and I spoke to him about it. He did a second colonoscopy to make his own determination of exactly where we were, etc. Much of what he came up with was pretty much what came, uh, we got out of Tapio in St. Lucia. And um, of course, they had to operate. So it involved uh, cutting the colon and, uh, you know, at the top and bottom and removing the tumor and then joining this thing back together. Uh, I spoke to the doctors here in St. Lucia. They indicated to me that much of the surgery that would be done here would be highly invasive in that they would have to pretty much split you wide open and go in there and do it. And um, the healing time would be longer, etc. One of the benefits is that they could have actually gone in and touched the various organs, seen them more clearly and been able to to, you know, make a, a good determinant about how much that spread and so on. Because um, my, my cancer was actually a stage three and it actually spread to the lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. So, um, but over there they would have had this, uh, what's it called? The liposcopic. Well, liposcopic surgery. So they go in with cameras and so on. So they'll just punch a few holes in you mm -hmm. and, um, and go in. So they had to go in, do that, and also remove the, the infected lymph nodes. But of course, prior to that, there were a number of tests that were done there. And I think it's important to state that. I mean, doctors can't work without information. They must have that information. You must be able to go and have all these various tests that are very important to pinpoint exactly where the cancer is, the exact extent to which it is spread, where it is, and so on, so that they can go in there and do it. Now, this is costly. Mm -hmm. and, and this brings up the, the, the vexing issue of you know, what can be done to give people a better opportunity yes. to survive this disease because of the fact that a lot of people simply resign themselves to their fate. Yes. Or they go and take bush medicine or something. I mean, I know people, in, in, even in my own former constituency, Chazelle, who, you know, they would just, well, if that's what God wants in Patwa, you know, or this or they, somebody will tell them, you know, boil two breadfruit upside down in a pot or something like that. And they do this kind of stuff. And this is not going to do it. This is science, you know, and I, I go with science. Um, I don't go with the voodoo stuff. And, um, I mean, it, 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 so essentially, this is what we had to do. Mm -hmm. uh, when the surgery was being done, the doctor had indicated that it would take about three and a half to four hours. It actually took six hours of surgery to get this thing done. And um, my recovery was pretty quick. I wanted it to be quick because we were right in the middle of elections, you know, and I wasn't <laughs> going to miss the big battle, okay? This was, this was, this was a secondary battle here. I, mean, I, had to miss, I had to get into the big battle. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I rushed into everything else and got going and so on, you know, all primed and pumped. But, but for me, really, I, I really think it's important, your, your frame of mind, um, you have to have a certain determination to go out there and, and, you know, get it done. It's important to try and get all the right information. There, 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 there are a lot of good doctors here uh, in St. Lucia. Um, I think we're just getting to the point now where the various tests that have to be taken are becoming more affordable. Mm -hmm. But I think, Dr. Gabriel, you'll agree with me that, you know, there, there are different kinds of medicine as well that are available. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's the cheaper medicine uh, and there's the more expensive medicine. Mm -hmm. And I think you would obviously have a better chance if you get the good stuff. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, definitely. I, I, so. I'm saying I don't know if I should say that, but I mean, I think it's you know, I I, I think it's necessary. I think it's I think know. it's in the minds of many people. But we have to go to a break now. You when know? we come back, I yes. would like to maybe ask you some questions on some of the things that you sure. said there. So this is the Law Factor Live. We'll be right back after the break. Stay with us.